He, he's a really nice young man. He's a tremendous leader. A role model for the younger guys. Highly motivated. Really intelligent young man. He's got a high basketball IQ. A lot of kids take for granted what they have because they don't, they haven't gone through what he's gone through. When you look at it realistically, he hasn't really played in four years. And here's a guy that's gone through some adversity and he's still playing and he's playing at a high level. If you don't know his story, then you'll never understand it. But if you listen to his story and what he's been through, you know, it brings you back to reality that, you know, somebody else is really going through something. It was something I always wanted to do. You know, I, as a, when I was a little kid, I wrote in my Bible that I wanted to play basketball in the United States. Kind of just came true, you know, like a little miracle that happened in my life. It's tough when you go away from home as a, a sophomore in high school, and you come to a, a whole nother, another country, different culture and everything. That's a tough transition when you don't, you're not gonna see your family for a while. I kind of picked up English pretty fast. I think uh, the fact that I listened to American music growing up helped with that. And um, you know, within yeah, within a year, you know, I learned how to speak English pretty fluently. That was definitely the the biggest adjustment. Then on the court, when Notre Dame started recruiting me my sophomore year, my high school coach was uh, like a huge Notre Dame fan. So he told me if they offer you, you're going there. And I was just like, okay, I don't know what it means. To, like it didn't mean much to me. And it really hit me my, like towards the end of my junior year when like you know I really blew up in AU and stuff. And I realized I'm like, oh shoot, like this is a this is a big deal what I thought it was. And I'm, I'm like right in front of the guy who's making the layup. So I'm looking up just to see where the ball's gonna end up. And uh, the guy who's trying to block him just comes down, like comes down and hits, uh, hits me in the face with, a, with, a, with his right hand and ends up poking me in the eye. I kind of kept my head down for a few minutes and then I looked up and couldn't see anything, but I didn't think anything of it. So, you know, I just kept playing. When I get home, my eyes like really swollen. Like it's like this, like this big. So I, I just freak out, call my guardian. We end up calling 911 just to, you know, just to calm me down because I, I didn't understand what was happening in the moment. And um, yeah, so we went to went to the hospital. They ran a bunch of tests, and uh, they couldn't they couldn't even see behind my eye. There was so much blood. And uh, the day or two after, they told me like they sent me the the test results, and they told me that my um, optic nerve was severed. I don't think I understood it right when it happened. I was still a kid. I was like, you know what? I'm still gonna play basketball. I'm still gonna do the things I thought I like I, I told people I was gonna do. I get to know the dame and I'm like, okay, I gotta prove the world I can play. So I'm spending all this time in the gym and stuff and I kinda realized I'm like, okay, well I, I gotta stop stopping myself because you know if I don't just crowd my mind with all these questions and negative thoughts, I can just be free and just play and that's what's happening. So it was really all in my head. You could not tell that uh, there was any anything wrong with his eye because he's very active. At times you see sometimes his timing may be off, but he was still very active and, and the player that uh, that he you know that everybody thought he was going to be, but obviously it wasn't the player that he wanted to be. I got stopped by other physical injuries that people were not aware of, but that's what that's really what stopped me. It wasn't really the eye injury. A couple of days before the season was supposed to start in Notre Dame, I, f I fall on my knee in practice and uh, it gets crack a piece of my bone. I sit out for about four months and come back too early, you know, try to be Superman again and overwork myself. I just kept working, kept doing more, you know, it was just like if I get my knees stronger, it would get better. It sucked at the time to not be able to play and not be able to compete and be out there with, uh, with my teammates and friends and whatnot. It was, it was really hard on me personally, but the fact that I, that I got injured really gave me the opportunity to actually focus on academics. Last year, we knew we needed another big guy, and we were looking at the transfer wire, and we saw Eric Katina's name on there, and, uh, and when we saw that he was looking to transfer and had one year to play and was looking to go to grad school, we thought we'd pursue him. It wasn't like he had gone through four years of major college basketball and we were getting a finely tuned athlete. I mean, we were getting a very, very good athlete who had had way too many setbacks, and we were going to have to treat him like an incoming freshman, but push him hard because he's only playing one year with us. Every kid has a different issue. His has been a long-term issue that, you know, he was at his other school with and never got better, which I'm not used to seeing. He had a quadriceps tendon tear. With the tendon tear, it's different than an actual muscle tear because it doesn't heal as fast. Uh, and if you work on it too fast and try to come back too quick, then it can just continue to linger and 
be an issue. I used to get kicked out of the gym uh, before the season because I was there too much and I wasn't supposed to because of my knees. Like he always wants to do more and more. Like what else can I do? Like he'll come to my office and be like, what do we got today? And I'll give him three or four things that we're going to do that be like, is this, is this all? Well, EJ will tell you I, I spend every day with him. I mean, he kicks me out of his office at times because I'm just around him all too much. I've also got to be the common sense person and say, hey, if we do too much today, then we're not going to be able to do anything tomorrow. And we don't want to miss days, so we've got to do baby steps. He played like the, the role of a parent for me, and that was really good because I was, I was like a little kid that was just so antsy to get on the court and just, you know, show the world. We've jumped enough that he knows how to land, so it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I'm just excited to see him be able to do it. And I just kept my head, to try to stay focused, and uh, you know, through through faith and hard work, it just all came back. Over the past three years, I learned how to just worry about what you can control. There's too many things going on in the world for you to focus on all these things, and if you think about all these things, there's no way you can just you can be successful in the one thing you're trying to do. Plusieurs rafales d'armes automatiques et des rafales assez longues qui venaient en direction depuis la direction du Bataclan. Donc visiblement, il y a eu. One of the attacks actually happened about, you know, five minutes away from where uh, my my family lives, where our apartment is uh, in Paris. So it was definitely like when I found out when I found the news, I called my mom in a hurry and I was worried, but thankfully she was asleep. You know, nothing was wrong. My brother was in his room playing video games, so you know, took a step back and said, "Well, I, I really can't control what's going on over there. All I can." All I can do is just call them every now and then, just to, every now and then, just to make sure that they're safe. You know, be grateful for for their safety and uh, continue on with my life because I can't. This, you know, me being sad or down or depressed is not going to do anything for them. Just be grateful that they're safe. You know, continue to pray, continue to stay positive. I'm just trying to focus on my academics and the little things I can control on the court, and if I do that, success will come. He didn't want anybody to look at him as a charity case. Hey, look, I'm a basketball player, you know? Other people would have let that really limit them and possibly give up, and I think Eric just looked at this as a, uh, a second chance at the collegiate level to prove a lot of people wrong that probably told him he should have given it up several years ago. My teammates see that. They, they, they saw all of that and they, they just respect. Like, it, it showed them that I was trying to lead for, uh, by example. And I'm sure that that helped me gain some respect. It wasn't just from day one that, okay, he's a fifth year senior graduate student. He's been at another school. We're going to look up to him. It wasn't that at all. He, had, he knew he had to prove himself to his teammates. I got a diploma from the University of Notre Dame, so there's really nothing I can't complain about. And now I'm getting the opportunity to get my master's degree at North Texas. And I, I can't say that this would have happened without the injuries. He's very positive, you know, he's, he's really good, really strong with his faith. And so he, he, it's tough for him to get down at times because he's always thinking, thinking very positively all the time. Stay positive, yeah, it's something I've had for three years now. So I just said stay positive on this side and G3, it means give God the glory.